Mendes is saying, with Rust, I struggle more with the compiler than anything else. Dynamic languages are good at bringing something out of the paper. Yeah, if you want to get stuff done, um, the reality is that you need some kind of relaxed typing. And Rust is just, it's fun, but I mean, if you really want to build value um, for tomorrow, you need something that actually allows you to do that. Tutu is saying, I have to thank you. Reposts have made a big impact on my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for your support and for this live stream. You're welcome. Sorry I'm late. It's fine. I think you can just roll. Um, you can basically start the video now. I think I have enabled that option. If I don't, just let me know. Pumpail is saying, any plates of supporting other cases for confirmed validation or custom field name for the same? Well, this is stubs, you know, so... Once they're published in your application, you can just basically customize them and um, build everything you want, right? Gobez is saying what I miss. You did miss a lot, dude. So go back to the beginning of the streaming because uh, we have covered already so much about Livewire and Breeze and everything. So let's keep going, okay? So I'm going to put the chat here on the bottom right. And we'd have, we do have a couple of things that I'd like to show you. So yeah, Laravel Breeze, a very simple starter kit for Laravel. Um, and the features are mainly basic authentication, like login, register, forget password. And once you are logged in, you can see your dashboard, which shows you that you are logged in. And you also have this small profile management page that you can use to manage your user. At any time, you can log out, and that's pretty much it. Once you install Livewire, you have full access to all of the code uh, that is published in your own application. So you can tweak the Livewire component if you want to, or you can tweak the template as well to, I don't know, sometimes you want to add some extra features to your own application and need to tweak this behavior, and you can do that as well. That being said, I want to show you something that I finished yesterday afternoon, and actually Taylor just merged it. Um, so it's very likely to be released early next week. And that's it, the functional API for Livewire, okay? So here, as I have said, we are using Laravel or Livewire Vault, which comes with a class-based API. This is the one, right? But in addition, uh, Livewire Vault also comes with its, its own API, which is this functional API. And now we have introduced that API as well on Laravel Breeze. I wanna show you that. So I'm gonna go to my terminal once again, I'm going to type clear, roll back a little bit, and remove the, inter the entire contents of my Laravel application. And I'm going to start a new one from scratch, typing Livewire new, uh, Laravel new Laravel. I'm going to choose again, no starter kit, passed as a testing framework, and no GitHub repository because we don't need one for now. <clears throat> Okay, so once my application is installed, which it is now, I can jump into my application folder and I can install Breeze once again. But now, instead of using the regular uh, stable version of Breeze, I'm going to use this branch, which is the one I was saying that I have worked yesterday uh, on the afternoon. It's merged already, however, will be only released next week. Uh, so I'm going to type a composer require Laravel Breeze, but the branch I'm working on, by the way, you can also pull this one, but don't tell anyone. Uh, and then I'm gonna type enter to install this version of Laravel Breeze. Now, the difference you will see is that if I type clear, I can simply type now PHP Artisan install, and instead of having only uh, one option with a class based the API of Vault, I now have Livewire with a functional API as well. And I can choose that option if I want to. So I'm gonna select that one, and I'm gonna select that one with dark mode as well. And once again, passed as a default testing framework. And by the way, I'm gonna just note that we also need to talk about testing because that's important. <clears throat> 
Okay, so obviously this command will install a uh, Laravel Breeze in your project as usual. And I'm going to uh, migrate the database as expected. So I'm going to just type here SQLite for my database. Once again, uh, the best database driver in the world. And I'm going to type PHP Artisan Migrate, create my database. And now I'm going to go to my Chrome, which typically should show just like before, um, a regular Laravel application with Breeze. Now, there is a difference. The difference is that um, before we were having this class-based API LiveWire components, but now we have um, the functional API of Vault. And let's start with the very simple example. This is the navigation bar on the top right, which has a logout button. So, Instead of having like a class, a full class uh, API for this LiveWire component, we simply have a variable. And now, for example, when I wish to click on wire navigate, I'm pretty much calling this variable, call it logout with this closure. And that's it. That's how simple this new functional API is. Um, let me show you a more complex example. Let's see, for example, the register uh, full page component, which is this one. Let's go to our Sublime Tags, click on Pages, Auth, and Register. Obviously, this is the more real-world uh, scenario where you have multiple stuff, such as layouts, uh, state, rules. So there's multiple things happening here. And I want to show you um, the before and the after. So I'm going to go to this Chrome... Um, Laravel uh, Breeze uh, website, and I'm going to go to the source directory, and I'm going to click on stubs, I'm going to click on live wire, um, regular live wire, pages auth, and then register. And let's compare the previous register with um, this new functional API, okay? Let's make this a little bit bigger. And as you can see on the right, we have the class-based approach, which we just have seen. If you love it, you can continue to use it, but now you have this new functional API if you wish to use it as well. So the layouts, instead of using these attributes, you can simply call this function layout to define your layout, which is, in my opinion, a little bit more smaller and sexy. Then to declare the state, typically you'd have to declare a bunch of properties. Now you just have to pass an array and their default value, which is pretty cool. For the rules, instead of calling a method, you can simply define rules and pass the rules within it. And finally, for actions, for example, this register action right here, instead of having a a class method, you can have a simple variable and uh, declare your closure. So here, the code is pretty much identical uh, within the body of this closure. Um, it is pretty much the same stuff. And as you can see, we are also using the navigate feature at the end of this redirect action. So that's the only difference. So the template is exactly the same. Everything is the same. However, the component definition with this new functional API is written using regular functions, okay? However, if you wish to use the class-based API, you can still use it. It's also an option, and I think it's also a great option. And Laravel is about that. It's about giving people the power to choose what they like the most. How we are on comments here. All right, let's see. Let's see what people are thinking. By the way, what do you think about Volt and what do you think about both APIs? Do you guys like, do you prefer the class-based API? Do you prefer the functional API? Do you like both or you don't know yet, which is okay. Let's see the questions here. Actually, before the questions, I want to show you probably one more example of this new functional API. Um, let's see, for example, the confirm password. Okay, so I'm going to go to the confident password blade.php and we have uh, the code of the class based approach and the code from the functional API. You can see that the code is very similar but written on a different way. Okay, obviously we have functions on the left and a regular class on the right. Let's take a peek on this stuff. Um, Okay, so again, to define the layout, just calling a regular function where with a class-based approach, you need to type an attribute. 
Um, for the state, you simply type state with a password with an empty field, and here you need to have a public uh, property. And for the rules, you simply pass an array with all the rules, and here you need an attribute. For the confirm password action, which is, by the way, being used, obviously, by the wire submit button just below, uh, you can have a regular uh, variable where, with the class-based approach, you need a public function uh, entirely, okay? Then the code within the body of these functions is exactly the same code. You don't need to change a thing, which is pretty cool. Regarding the template, the template is exactly the thing, the same thing. And one question I get regularly is regarding auto-completion. Obviously, I'm using Sublime Text, so my auto-completion is pretty much nothing. However, uh, if you wish to use uh, something like uh, PHP Storm, you have a full auto-completion out of the box, which is pretty cool. And with GitHub Copilot, to be honest, now at this point, it offers you pretty much auto-completion everywhere, which is pretty cool. Okay. Uh, so now that being said, I see the chat. Sorry for not keeping up with the chat uh, in the recent couple of minutes. But let's see what people are saying. By the way, is SQLite good for production environment? Is Montasser asking? Dude, it depends, man. If you have a lot of writes, uh, probably no. But if you have a lot of reads and not a lot of concurrent users, I think it's perfectly fine. So for blogs, for your small pizza website, um, for those kind of simple scenarios, SQLite is great. Uh, Monari is saying that's pretty cool, but left me wondering how to use traits if there is no class defined with the functional API. That's a great question, Mauricio, and I'm going to show you the answer. So I'm going to go back into my uh, Chrome here, and I'm going to uh, open the Vault documentation. By the way, if you go to Livewire, obviously you have this beautiful website that Caleb have built. You can click on Start here, and you will see that there is this full, beautiful documentation about Livewire. And one of those topics on the bottom left is Vault. You can click on Vault, and once you click on Vault, you can search for traits, okay? And you can see there is a topic called custom traits and interfaces. So if you wish to use like a trait, you can simply type uses and pass the trait name uh, within. So uh, a simple scenario would be, let's imagine, for example, uh, you want to create a trait here, call it, I don't know, uh, um, interacts with users, for example, okay, this is your own trait, and you would type like a public method call it users, that fetches all the users, for example. Something you can do is just type just below uses and then pass this interact with users class, and now you have fully access to this, tr this particular trait, okay? So now you can call users, for example. That's the way it works with traits. Uh, however, typically, if you need like sh some shared behavior, Something I will do is I would probably just create just another function, something like, I don't know, uh, users, and then I would pass a function, and within that function, I would perform my work. And when you do something like this, you can now access to these users within uh, this function body to have access to this uh, behavior right here, which I think is pretty cool. Okay. Um, now, that being said, let's keep going and see a little bit about the chat before we jump into testing and finish this live stream. Um, so people are saying, oh, Tutu, just, holy shit, this uh, went a little bit down. There we go. For me, it depends uh, on the type and complexity of the application. I think Marielle is talking about SQLite. And indeed, it depends. It depends on multiple things. Tutu is saying uses with sorting. Yes, that's the way you use traits with uh, Livewire Vault. Thanks for mentioning that on the chat. Nice idea. Gobez is saying for the functional API. Thank you. Uh, well, it's obviously heavily inspired on Vue and React, but I think it's a very welcome experience for people coming from um, JavaScript worlds. Marels is saying, I particularly prefer Vault with a class style because I think it's better to my to the readability. Yeah, it's perfect. Like, if you like it and you like the class style API, it's pretty cool. By the way, just to reference, um, I know that, for example, with Vue.js, you can use Vue 2 or 
options API and Vue 3 functional API. And a lot of people still use the options API, which is very similar to the classed API of Livewire. So that's perfectly fine. Um, Danielle is saying, like with past, bringing function-based approach is very welcome. Yeah, I love functions, and I feel like a lot of people love functions as well. Uh, so that's pretty cool. <clears throat> How to pass a parameter state on the functional API? Uh, can you elaborate in your question so I can uh, answer it uh, with real code? Not sure I follow it. Uh, Pumpayal is saying, have you checked the new start code chat feature of GitHub Copilot? I have not. However, typically, um, I, I like GitHub Copilot when they actually offer me some kind of autocomplete. You know, so when I type, for example, for each user, do this or that, and then I type enter, and just below, it starts to actually write the code, you know what I mean? I like that stuff, however, when I'm kind of interacting with AI, writing real chat on some separate window, I don't like it that much. But uh, I understand that like, they are innovating so fast that maybe that will change in the future. But so far, it doesn't click to me, go outside of my editor to make questions. Uh, but I do like to make those questions or make requests to the AI directly on my code. 